Particle physics and cosmology often involve a lot of complicated ideas, but sometimes they're simpler than others. For instance, everybody knows what a lens is. Maybe we have glasses. Maybe we've played with a magnifying lens. If you just casually look through a lens, it distorts your view of things that are behind it. Today, we're going to talk about a different kind of lens. This lens is called a gravitational lens, and it is caused by a large mass actually distorting and bending space. That's a pretty cool idea, so let's see how that works. It all started in 1915, when Albert Einstein invented a new theory of gravity called general relativity. General relativity treats space as malleable, and the very shape of space itself can be distorted. In this theory, objects don't orbit other objects because they're attracted together. Instead, objects travel in straight lines in curved space. The orbit of a planet around the sun is a straight line from the point of view of the planet. That's kind of a mind-blowing idea, and it definitely needs some explanation. So let's think about someone walking in a straight line on the surface of the Earth. In principle, if they walk long enough, they will come back to their starting point. By walking in a straight line on the curved surface of the Earth, they really ended up walking in a circle. So that's the basic idea, but do we really need that idea? After all, Newton's idea of gravitational forces works pretty well. Is there an observation that can show that Einstein was right? It turns out that there is. Light travels in a straight line. If it turns out that you see a curved path of light in outer space, that means space has been bent. To get an idea of how this works, you need to understand a few things. For instance, a star emits light in all directions, but you can only see it at a point. That's because light has to enter your eye to see it, and only a small amount of the star's light does that. Thus, the light you see follows a very narrow path. According to Einstein's theory, the mass of a star will bend space, and light passing nearby will follow a curved path. We see this in this example. Now let's think about what it looks like when we just look into the sky. Since your eye doesn't know that the light was curved, a distant star looks like it's in the wrong place. Simple, right? The only problem is the only nearby star that can curve space is the sun. And the sun is so bright that it blots out any stars behind it. So in 1919, Sir Arthur Eddington used an eclipse to see past the sun. When he looked at the position of distant stars very close to the sun, he found that the positions of some of them weren't as expected. The effect of gravity had altered the path of light. This news clip from the November 10th, 1919 New York Times shows what he saw. You should be aware that modern astronomers are torn on the persuasiveness of Eddington's measurement, but for more modern measurements, there is no dispute. In 1936, Einstein extended his idea to the situation where a distant mass and an even more distant mass were aligned along a line that passes through the Earth. Because light from the even more distant mass, which could be a galaxy or a quasar, is emitted in all directions, light emitted in many directions would all be bent by the intervening mass. The net result is that you would see an image of the more distant mass that looked like a ring around the nearby mass, what scientists call the, the lensing mass. Here are some examples that have been observed so far. You'll note the rings that are easily visible in each photo. Einstein's basic idea has been confirmed and has been observed when the lensing mass was a single galaxy or even an entire cluster of galaxies. Once a principle has been demonstrated, it can be used. For instance, if you see the example of gravitational lensing, you can use what you see to determine the mass of the lens. And this leads to an amazing use for the idea of gravitational lensing we can use it to see the unseeable. For nearly a century, scientists have suspected that there exists a form of matter in the universe called dark matter. Dark matter, by its very definition, cannot be directly observed. However, dark matter has mass and therefore can form a gravitational lens. Accordingly, we can use distorted images of galaxies to directly measure the mass between those distant galaxies and us. And, and this is important, this even includes the amount of invisible dark matter. There have been many studies whereby astronomers have used this technique, but a recent and very powerful result has been obtained using a 570 megapixel camera that is the heart of an experiment called the Dark Energy Survey, or DES. It uses a four meter wide telescope in Chile to study the night sky. Although the name of the experiment suggests that it is to study dark energy, and furthermore, 
dark energy and matter are very different things, it turns out that DES studies millions of distant galaxies. With such a large data set, they can look for even small distortions in the shape of those galaxies to work out the amount of intervening matter. Now you might claim that the distant galaxies could be distorted on their own. They just might be weird shaped galaxies. However, what astronomers look for are distortions in common. If all the galaxies in a distant cluster of galaxies have a similar distortion, then it is far more likely that the distortion stems from the lensing effects of the intervening matter and not the shape of the galaxies themselves. I can illustrate this using this iPad app called GravLens. We start out with a uniform grid of distant galaxies. However, if we superimpose a large but invisible mass, we can see that the distortions caused by the gravitational lensing. We can then make visible the lensing mass. Scientists use these small distortions to make maps of the dark matter in the universe. The DES experiment isn't the only group employing the gravitational lensing technique, but they do have an incredible piece of equipment that can study about 10% of the sky. Their recent announcement covers only a mere 0.3% of the sky and only using a single year's worth of data. When they expand their analysis to the entire angle they cover and the full five years of data they expect to take, we can expect to see a very precise map of the matter of the universe, including the invisible dark matter. Basically, Einstein's theory of general relativity has allowed us to determine the structure of the universe, both visible and invisible, and that is an incredible achievement.